Hey calligraphy friends! In this video, I'll be showing you how to vectorize your calligraphy works into a digital form. Today, I'm going to be sharing all my processes from the very first step of sketching and inking to scanning and editing in Illustrator step by step. Let's dive right into it! This copper play pad from John Neal is one of my favorite papers when I work on my calligraphy projects. It comes in two sizes, which are letter and tabloid. This one that I have here now is the bigger one among two. The pad comes with square grids and 55 degree angle guidelines, which makes your drafting stage very easy and enjoyable. Step number one, sketch the design. I use two squares to be my X height, which comes to quarter of an inch and four squares to be my ascender and descender height, which comes to half an inch above the X height and bottom of the X height. First, I sketch out the letters that I want to write without adding any flourishing. Today, I'm writing the word pointed pen nibs. I'll explain later why so. Step number two, add flourishing. After writing out the word in a plain copper plate style first, then I try to explore ways to add flourishing. I always try to remember that readability should not be compromised because of the addition of flourishing to the original letters. Usually, I try to think of big and small ovals to create a graceful flourishing. Step 3. Use a light pad to copy. I got this A3 size light pad from Amazon. It is such a great size, and yet it feels quite light in your hands. You just plug in the power cord, and there are three different levels of brightness that you can choose. This is a great practice paper that I use all the time. It's called HP Premium 32 Pounds Printer Paper. If you haven't tried it, please do! It's super affordable and yet very smooth white paper. Now that you have turned on your light pad, all you need to do is lightly copy over the sketch onto the paper. Using these washi tapes helps you to station the paper while copying. Step number four, inking. Now it's time to ink the word. Let's use Moon Palace Sumi ink. It'll give nice clean black and white finish, which will make the scanning and editing easy later on. Step number five, scanning. After we finish writing with the ink, now scan the finished piece with a scanner. You don't need a fancy, most up-to-date scanner to do this. This printer that I have, I have used it almost a decade, but it's still working fine. Now, let's take a look at the file from the computer. I'm using a Mac computer for this. I open up image capture from the launchpad, click the device, the scanner you're using. I'm scanning from document feeder rather than the flatbed. Choose black and white. Now, this is the most important part, resolution. Usually for print, we need minimum of 300 dpi, but I usually prefer 600 dpi so that I work with the best quality possible. Name your scan file, pointed pen nibs, I think we are ready. Hit scan. Your scanned files usually are saved in the pictures folder if you haven't set a particular destination. I use Creative Suites for all my graphic works. Launch Illustrator. Step number six, edit in Illustrator. Press open. Find the file that you have just scanned. I copied my scanned files onto the desktop.
press Command-0 for full view. If necessary, rotate the image by clicking the image and while pressing Shift to make precise 90-degree turns, rotate the image from the corner. Now, we're going to use a tool called Image Trace. If you don't see the button, go to Window and Image Trace. You'll see an image trace panel like so. Click on this box to turn on the preview mode. Click OK for this prompt window to proceed. Now we can preview in real time how our piece will look like when we do image trace. But notice how some of the delicate details like these hairlines are lost by the default setting. In such cases, play around with this threshold slide to adjust to your liking. As you can see, if you bump up the threshold, it will make the lines thicker. On the other hand, lower threshold makes thinner lines. When you are satisfied with the setting, press on Expand button to break down each component of the graphic. After expanding, all the graphic chunks are broken down from each other allowing us to work separately with each element. First thing I do is to delete the white background of the paper. Select by clicking the background several times and delete. I also selected these test marks and deleted it by pressing the delete button. Now I create a simple rectangle by using the rectangle tool. It doesn't have to be perfect. Choose a very vibrant color. You will soon see why I am doing this step. In Layers panel, move the pink rectangle layer underneath the calligraphy layer. Ta-da! Now you can easily see where there are white chunks of graphics left for deletion. You can go around and delete each white chunks away. Oh, and a quick tip. Press spacebar to turn your pointer into a hand. This way you can move around the page with ease. Spacebar, click, and glide. Press escape button to get to the top layer group. Now we don't need the pink rectangle anymore. Click on the rectangle layer and delete by dragging it to the trash can. Command plus to zoom in. Now, when we look close, some of the lines are very wiggly and not smooth. So, click on the white arrow first, which is also called Direct Selection Tool, and choose Smooth Tool. This tool might be hidden as a subtool under Shaper Tool. Click and hold to open Subtools menu. Now, when you click the path, you'll see all the anchor points. All you need to do is to go over the path and it will smooth out the line automatically. But be careful! Sometimes the smoothing tool smooths out too much and totally changes the original path. So, you need to use it sparingly and carefully. If you don't like how the smoothing turned out, you can always undo by pressing Command Z. You don't have to go crazy perfect since most of the time we won't be looking at these letter forms in such big scale. Unless you're creating a huge poster or a billboard, decent amount of smoothing will do the trick. And if you feel like you wish to have more precise control, you can always pinpoint one anchor with the direct selection tool and move the anchor point and its curvature. And always remember to save the file before something happens. And it's probably a good idea to save the file in the beginning before starting your editing process. So now that we have finished the vectorizing, we can now apply the graphic anywhere we wish. You can resize it to whatever the size you desire without losing the crispiness of the edges. That's the very benefit of vectorizing a graphic. 
I'm currently working on a guidebook on pointed pen nibs. This is the rough draft of the cover that I have created. Let's apply the title pointed pen nibs into the booklet. Simply copy and paste command C, command V from one document to another and it's done. I have gone through the exact same process for the time that I designed the graphic layout for the giveaway that I recently hosted on Instagram. Here's a quick overview of all the steps in speed mode. Adjust the threshold level. Expand the graphic. And clean away the white chunks, including the white background. Smooth out the edges using a smooth tool. This is how the final graphic turned out. Both the title and my own personal logo at the bottom are created using the same method that I went over in this video. I hope you guys find this video helpful, and if it is, please subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy writing!